the Chinese space program, uh, space program just continues to fascinate and amaze. We're so used to NASA being the leader and the Russians whenever uh, they were doing things and the limited amount of uh, information we got from them. And then ESA, with, particularly with their science uh, program and so on. But now China is really catching up with everybody else. Uh, for political reasons, which I'm not going to go into, basically they are not to particip allowed to participate in the ISS. America says so. America basically calls the shots on this one. So they built their own space station uh, called Shan Shanwei, I think is the pronunciation, which means harmony of the heavens. Now, this crew went up for uh, 90 days. That's longer than, uh, three times longer than any previous Chinese crew. Not as long as your average stint on the ISS, but they're in early days yet. Uh, they went up, spent the 90 days there doing research and testing the systems and so on, and then splashed down uh, very safely in the Gobi Desert. I'm only going to use their first names because I don't think I can pronounce the surnames properly, so apologies to them. But Ni, Liu and Pang had a successful flight. Uh, it actually took three days for them to come back because they made it uh, sort of a, a multi-stage process. On Wednesday last, they detached from the space station. Then they did a rendezvous, another test rendezvous with their space station just to test systems on the Thursday. And then they uh, came away from that and uh, did the full deorbit and touched down on Friday. All told a very successful mission. And of course, it's only the start. <clears throat> The existing station is much, much smaller than the ISS. It's only about 54 uh, feet or 16.6 .6 meters long. But as I say, it's early days. They're going to be sending up another two modules to uh, dock with it and make a sort of a, a, a tripart, like a trimaran space station. The next crew is due to go up in mid-October. We don't know the exact date yet because they generally don't give us uh, a lot of detail. Uh, and uh, that new... Uh, bigger developed space station is going to be called Shangong, which is a name that has already been used with previous satellites, which have now been uh, deorbited and burned up. But that means Heavenly Palace. And I think basically it's just a case of watch this space with China. Um, we have talked before about the first people on Mars. I would not be at all surprised if the first people on Mars are actually Chinese. There's a lot going on there that uh, we don't fully know about, but certainly what they're doing with a very high success rate. Uh, First attempt to uh, get a rover on the surface of Mars, successful. First landing on the far side of the moon, successful. The other rovers that they sent on to the moon, successful. They have a very good success rate. And uh, I say, as a matter of watch this space, they, they are going forward by leaps and bounds. Yeah, the engineering quality is is proving to be exceptional. And again, I've been saying this, and you know about this, Terry, as well. We've been saying this for years. Their whole trajectory is really following the early days of NASA. With, you know, up, down, very simple flights, aka Mercury, then moving forward onto more complex flights, you know, multi-astronaut flights, docking in space, etc. They're now almost at their Skylab kind of moment. They've done yeah. their lunar landing, um, as you said, very successfully on the far side of the moon and, you know, also developing a relay station. We'll be talking about that a bit more in a while. Um, but now they're kind of almost looking at what America were doing in the early 70s with Skylab, mm -hmm. where you're putting up a, you know, a larger structure in space, perfecting your docking maneuvers, making sure that you've got a working habitat up there to do scientific research or whatever um, they, they intend to do up there. I I don't know. I think it's more going to be a space race between China and the commercial entities. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think Musk is going to want to be beaten by anybody when it comes to getting to Mars. You know, he's been developing everything. All of his technologies have got one singular goal, and that's to put human beings on the surface of Mars. That's what he continually says. So if China can exceed that and can surpass what he's doing, all power to them but uh, i just look at that capsule in the picture and think three days and that's just mm. not, that's about the size of a soyuz and you look at the design of it china are as we know from many areas of commercial activity are extremely good the chinese manufacturers are extremely good at looking at ideas that may have been developed in the west and then copying them but doing in, in many respects a better job in in some areas um, I know in the astronomy world, the amateur telescopes, you know, Skywatcher, mm -hmm. for example, massive Chinese brand. When they first came out, the, the big guns like Mead and Celestron, et cetera, were saying, oh, well, you know, they're just some cheap Chinese copy. And the same with the lenses and the optics and the telescopes. 
now everybody uses them because they're so good and they're so reliable every pretty much everyone i know uses skywatcher mounts and their telescopes are extremely good and celestron are now owned by a chinese company and mead have gone bust so um all power to, to what china are doing i can say um it, it's just a shame there's still the ongoing political tensions especially mm. now with what's happening with the submarines for example in the defense sector and obviously with the aircraft carriers out in the indo-pacific the uh, asia pacific region um it would just be great if there could be almost like a as, as biden was saying at the united nations today the diplomacy needs to take over you know saber rattling etc we don't need that we've proved with space we can live and survive and work in very close harmony even with our sworn enemies in the case of russia and you only have to look at what's happened today with russia and the salisbury poisonings and yeah the british government's still got major issues with anything to do with the russians but the iss is proving time and again that we can cooperate and we can collaborate and we can do great scientific work. So I just hope that that, that continues and you know, let's see what China do. Like you said, watch yeah. this space. 